All right, we're, this week we're going to be talking about Dutch Doomsday Preppers. Ninja Students. Michael Hutchins and his auto-asphyxiation death. Pornographic Sculptures. And Fight Club Dementia. And of course, $8 billion man titties. <laughs> you gotta love it. All right, enjoy. <laughs> And welcome to Celts in the Caribbean, uh, episode 11. How uh, you doing, guys? Hello. Welcome. Uh, I'm Yunan, and across from me is... I'm Alan. We're coming to you from a sweaty bon air. We are. We turned off all the fans. Uh, any, any crack this week, Alan? We have an action-packed show for you this week. <laughs> okay. I'm excited. Uh, we didn't do one last week because there was... No news. Um, and and there was also a boat party which we were all drunk at. Yeah, we went, we went for uh, Float Fest. Uh, so the start of uh, the start of Float Fest in, in Bon Air. So we just uh, inflated. A, we were surrounded by massive flamingos and unicorns and just drank a lot of beer. And yeah, a few hundred people uh, sitting out just drinking beer on uh, unicorns. It was pretty good. Yeah, and some quite. Terrible, terrible music. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on repetition. Yes, but it was great. Yeah, so yeah. that's why we weren't here last week. Um, but I have three full A4 pages. I've had to upgrade the size of my pages this week. You are writing in crayon, though. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> three lines per <laughs> per word. <laughs> so I've got some. I've got some fun stuff for later on in the podcast. So I got my. I can't remember if I've talked about it before, but I got my 23 and Me back. That's the oh, one where I'm you, excited. Like, Have you, you opened s- it? I opened it just to make sure that I it wasn't going to be sitting around trying to log in so that okay. it worked. And I accidentally saw a little bit of the results, but we can go. We're going to go into that more in depth. You find out you're from Scotland. <laughs> hey, I'm from Scotland. Yeah, yeah, look at that. So, uh, we can see how how Celtish I am later on. We're gonna do that in about the fortieth minute. I was looking at our stats. Okay. People only listen for an average of thirty two minutes. So we're gonna do it about no the shit. forty minute mark. Thirty two minutes. We lazy need to, bastards. We're we need gonna, to up the game on yeah, that. So the exciting the, stuff's gonna come then. Well, I'm gonna start this week on uh, the Dutch family uh, that was in hiding. Did I heard about this? this. This was one of my on my three pages of notes. <laughs> okay, cool. We'll scratch it <laughs> off. Um, Scratched about the the Dutch family that was in hiding. Um, they were planning for the end of days. Dun, dun, dun. Did you see it? Was it the Mayan end of days? Because they'd been down there for nine, nine years. years. Yeah. So I can't remember. We we have these occasional ones where the world's going to end. And I know there was there was the Mayan calendar was coming to an end. Do you think was it that one that was nine years ago? Actually, it didn't say anything about that. Um, <clears throat> it just said they were planning for it. I um, I didn't see what calendar they were going on. I mean, like Nostradamus had predicted. I don't know however many ends of the world. Maybe it was only one, but... It and there's out. always an excuse afterwards. When the world doesn't end, they're like, oh, we... Yeah, well, Nostradamus was working on a <laughs> Georgian <laughs> calendar, yeah, and we were working on... It's a trilogy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but no, uh, it was a dad and uh, six kids. Um, you seen how they were caught also? Yes. Caught. <laughs> but how, how it was exposed, the, the whole story? Because one of the lads escaped... And what's he the did. first thing you do when you've been trapped in a basement for nine years? You go and have a pint. Yeah, go to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He went and he ordered five beers. And after the fifth beer, uh, the bartender started talking to him. Uh, this is in the Netherlands again, by the way. And uh, it was a small farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. So he had to walk to town, the small village that was close by. It was in Drenth. Drenth. <laughs> Drenthe? Drenthe? Uh, okay. And uh, he, uh, yeah, so he orders five beers and then he spilled his guts and he said, hey, look, we need help. Um, turns out the dad's brother was also involved in this fucking crazy escapade. And um, after all people were discovered and so on and so forth, it became, uh, it became clear that the father was also involved in a cult in California back in the day called the Moon Cult. And uh, he lived in California for a uh, specific amount of time. And uh, in the Moon Cult, 
I can see you looking at your notes, so you have you have re- no, you have read way more than I. Have. <laughs> <laughs> You've I, already covered all my notes. Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> all three pages. No, so he was like involved in the moon cult, and that was where there was a bunch of people of the same age, and they were all living in a, a civil society in the middle of nowhere in California, and uh, they were doing like mass marriages, essentially like marrying off a ton of people at the same time. And were they planning on, was it one of these cults where they're planning on like building a spaceship and going living on the moon was that why they were called no i think they were all also survivalists and it was about like creating families and your own um your own your own way of living you know so like they were creating their own food and so on and so forth even back then so i think he took like the same ideas didn't drink the Kool-Aid and came back to the ne- uh, the Netherlands and uh, yeah, him and the kids went into into hiding and uh, was his wife there or was there no? I didn't I didn't read anything about the wife. Neither did I. I just got fifty eight year old man and six six young adults between eight and or eighteen and twenty five. Uh, yeah, the father was also called Joseph, and he was from Austria. Now. I don't want to draw too many comparisons, but do you feel that this is a a there, thing in Austria? There is one gentleman that <laughs> <laughs> pops to mind for crazy Austrians. <laughs> Good old uh, Schnitzel himself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Joseph Fritzel. That's it's always my favorite when you're playing that game. When like you know <laughs> the where Joseph you Fritzel to, game, <laughs> the Joseph Fritzel game. All right, kids. No, the one where you like. You have to write somebody's name and you put it on your forehead and everybody oh, else yeah. has to, and you have to guess who you are. Yep. That's my go-to person. Oh, really? <laughs> Joseph Fritzl. That Fritz. is brilliant. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to like use that on you. Yeah. Everybody else is like Batman and Arnold Schwarzenegger. And it's like, and you're like Joseph <laughs> Fritzl. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, uh, that was my opener this week. Uh, the craziness that happens in small town, Dutch land. Small town Dutch land. Let's move over to small town Ireland. Well, oh. it's not actually small town. It's like, it's your biggest. It's, Dublin? This, this one's coming from Dublin. You probably saw this one as well, because it was like, it went pretty viral. But did you see, let me grab his name actually, because we want to give him a, a shout out to this, this legend. legend. Uh, Shea Bradley. I did see you, Shay Bradley. You saw Shay Bradley. All and right. just so she's know, we actually do not compare notes. So this is actually kind of fun for. <laughs> this is what makes it fun for us. Neither of us know what either of us are talking about, both figuratively and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, what about Shay? So Shay unfortunately lost his uh, lost his battle with uh, a, an ongoing illness, but. He was a bit of a an Irish character by the by the sounds of it, and he'd he's had a a childhood sweetheart for for forty three years, and uh, so they'd been married. He's a, a, a few uh, a few kids, and but he wanted to leave every, like he wanted everybody to leave his his funeral not crying and sad, but laughing and happy. And his way of doing it was he had a recorder in his coffin. Uh, and as he was like, as they were like putting the putting the dirt on the coffin, the the recorder went. Uh, he started talking from beyond the grave. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this. It's it's pretty brilliant. It's amazing. So they're like, it started off with a knocking sound, like so it sounded like he was knocking on the on the top of the coffin. And I was like, <laughs> do you do you want to do the Irish? Can you do a Dubliner accent? Yeah. Do Do you have the script? So here it's like, let me out. It's fucking dark. It's, dark. Fu- it's fucking dark in here. Is that a fucking priest I can hear? <laughs> so, I mean, I'm assuming some of the some people were maybe warned a little bit beforehand, but that just sounds like the prank of the year. What what a guy! Sounds uh, like the best funeral you could ever go to. Yeah. So good on you, Shea Bradley, for like putting a, a smile on every not just everybody who's there's faces, but uh, I think. It went viral, so there's millions of people that have uh, that know your name and are are giving you a little nod. So yeah, he was described was as the the life and soul of the party. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know yeah. Uh, 
So last week, or a couple of weeks ago, episode 10, uh, you went through all of Ireland's inventions. So we kind of, I kind of like the the idea of having that. So we had that that running idea throughout the show. Uh, but I had two things. So coming up later, I have some Kiss news, the band. Okay. So I've written down twenty one Kiss songs. So yeah. I was going to like try and sneak the titles in throughout the throughout the episode without you knowing. And if uh, if you miss them, you have to drink. Or if at home you like every time you hear a Kiss song, you have to drink. But I also have, like, well, the polar opposite of, like, I did the, not the polar opposite of Kiss songs, the polar opposite of Irish inventions. I've got all the, the Scottish inventions. That is the polar well. opposite, because the Irish ones actually worked. <laughs> hey! <laughs> there, did I tell, the, wasn't, wasn't there, did we tell the joke last week? I can't remember, there was the, was it the Irish toilet seat joke? No. No, because I... I didn't think so, but I read it like just after we did it, and there's like kind of an old school joke where it's like, "Oh, the the Irish invented the the toilet seat," and you're like, "Oh," but it was the the Scottish that uh, had the idea of putting a hole in it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you perfected it. <laughs> you're just so full of shit. <laughs> but we we did. Uh, well, I may as well start. Alexander Cumming did invent the the flushing toilet, so. The world no would be way. a much shittier place without Mr. Wood. Alexander coming. Good on you. And uh, do you have another one? Uh, just while we're talking about the, the survivalists and the, your moon party in California. Are you going to say Alexander Selkirk? I was going to say David Sterling. Oh. He was uh, uh, the inventor. Well, I don't know if inventor is the right word, but he was the came up with the SAS, the Special Air Services. Oh, no way. So, uh, I thought it was special army, uh, special army soldiers, according to Ricky Gervais. That is incorrect, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> or you have misquoted. Sorry, Ross. Oh, no. Camp. It was actually Ross Camp. My what apologies. Did, what did it <laughs> Wait, who did you say then? Maybe I've got him written down. You said, sir. Who Ale- are you going to guess at? Alexander Selkirk. He was who uh, Robinson Crusoe was based on. Oh, okay. That's not really an invention. So I don't no, know but he's that. a pretty cool Scotsman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Maybe. You don't have many of them, so you should probably write. We them. have. I could spend <laughs> the next hour just, just reading ber- these. Berating me with history. There's some, <laughs> there are some weird ones. Kaleidoscopes. If you, oh yeah. Yeah. Really. That's it. Yeah. This one my dad sent me. It's like, oh, did you know we invented the kaleidoscope? It's like, no, don't really care either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I actually, all these are from my dad. I didn't I like research this uh, at all. Although they're like you know you know the famous ones so Alexander Graham Bell with the uh, I think I call don't, it I miss don't him. don't blow your wad don't blow your wad no I'm going for ones that people don't know about ah okay because we know about the, Alexander Graham Bell yeah we know about those ones and the TV and the they invented the vibrator the didn't he and, yeah the uh, extra powerful <laughs> one <laughs> <laughs> the the one that can be seen from overseas. Um, uh, what about uh, Fight Club Dementia? I've not. Oh, don't have that one on my notes. No, wicked. I'm so happy I subscribe to these wicked. crap news sites on Facebook. Where is this news site? What are you going to reference them? No, I'm not. They're not no. even worthy of it. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> I, I but hope we think that... this is going to be true because we do pride ourselves. These aren't made up headlines. We do have some. No, no, the, 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 the headlines exist. I hope the things behind the headlines also exist. But uh, yeah, that's where it gets a bit uh, up and down. So, in North Carolina, uh, three ladies have just been fired from their daycare jobs in an old person's home um, because a fight broke out between a seventy and a seventy-three-year-old uh, dementia patients uh, in their care home, and instead of breaking up the fight. They filmed it for their own uh, for for their own amusement, and uh, it became a thing. They were filming uh, a live fight between these old people. Was it a like a live Facebook prod, uh, broadcast? No, it wasn't was a live a, Facebook broadcast. Has it gone broad uh, viral? I think people it has. Yeah, them. Uh, but <sighs> I do want to watch it. I do. <laughs> That's a, that's a terrible... I also thought, like, does that make me a bad person if I have to search for this? Oh, a little bit. But do you remember bum fights? They were awesome, but also felt like a terrible person watching them. I don't remember bum fights. Can you Bum explain? fights were when, like, 
these like fucking dickhead oh, college kids would go bombs and, yeah like homeless people yeah yeah would ah, pay okay. like but that's where Kimbo Slice got his like became famous because yep. he, he was one of the original bum fighters <sighs> Kimbo Slice like, Jesus. <laughs> he's just an absolute unit but it's basically just homeless how, drunk how do you people think he, fighting each other how do you think he retained his body mass if he was homeless uh, from bum fighting <laughs> <laughs> he, he was, was new to the game <laughs> Yeah, so uh, these three ladies that uh, were all fired, uh, one was actually prosecuted because after the fight, she had forcibly uh, thrown the woman into the room and, uh, yeah, assault charges were taken against her for it. <laughs> yeah. Did they have a name? Like, did they have good marketing for these fights? Were, like, did they have a name for the, the old people fights? Was I, it? Th- I came up with Fight Club Dementia. I thought that was pretty fight good. Fight Club Dementia is pretty good. Uh, doily smackdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. I get where you're going with this. <laughs> Handbags at dawn. <laughs> Have you ever seen the uh, the Monty Python sketch with the little old ladies that run in with their handbags, and it's they're they're recreating like Claude and they're recreating old uh, old wars old, in the old UK. Women. Oh, and okay. it's just uh, but they replace the the armies with like little old ladies that run up and just beat each other with bags. I did not see this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I, okay. Well, it's amazing. So well, so, so, what else do we have, mate? Uh, well, if we're on the police, but there has been... I, I think it was in the States. They're now uh, trialing police robots. So, it kind of like, looks like an extended R2-D2. So, that kind of shape, but maybe like five feet tall. Okay. okay. And they just kind of patrol, like, public areas and the idea is if you can go up and you can report a crime but there's also an emergency button on them you hit them and you can get direct access to the police cool. now but they're still in trial and they don't apparently there's not any stickers on them or anything to say that it's like a trial in process so a woman there's a fight broke out in this uh, in a uh, in the park uh, so she ran up to the police robot uh, robot hit the hit the red button and reported the crime. And apparently, the robot just told the woman to go away and then started singing a little song and went about went about his day because like it wasn't uh, it was it wasn't programmed to take uh, no it was connected to like the software company or something it wasn't connected, connected to, to the, the police teletubbies. so the her and the the police robot got into a little bit of a barmy. I can imagine it didn't really uh, quite and uh, how pissed off she was. No, and I don't know what the song was. I guess he started just, like, whistling away. Oh, God, that sucks. Yeah, no, I don't know if AI is uh, capable of that. Like, how how are you going to... If it happens in uh, in Newcastle, how the fuck are they going to understand that shit? <laughs> or Glasgow? Well, you just have to hit a button. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck's going to happen? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> that was... I don't know what that was. <laughs> yeah, I don't uh, know what that was either. I uh, think I'm going to wait for my kiss thing till next week. Yeah, I know. Because oh, okay. I think doing that uh, is too much. Because I, I was going to... Do you know I was going to say... I was going to say... Do you know what? It's too much, Alan. Yeah, it is too much. And the kiss... The kiss... Uh, the kiss story, it's timeless, so it can win. Yeah, it, it doesn't is. matter. It doesn't. You don't as need is, to know about it this as week. As is kiss. But tune in next week. Um, speaking of too much, um, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of uh, Michael Hutchins this week. Oh, well, yes, he is too much. <laughs> yeah. In, oh, in, a, in excess, some, would be, some people would say. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, joke number two from you. And that wasn't two, one. even planned. <laughs> oh, well. I don't know if it counts Boom. if you didn't write it. <laughs> yeah, it was fucking great. Uh, <laughs> so it's actually about uh, uh, Michael Hutchins, Michael Hutchins' death, and the the rumors that surround Michael Hutchins' death. Uh, Michael Hutchins supposedly, uh, supposedly, uh, supposedly uh, died by uh, auto asphyxiation by jerking off. Uh, tied to a door or something. Along it's lucky the lines. this isn't YouTube. Because <laughs> I was just in a little in a pro- jerk jerk off. <laughs> oh, sorry, that was a that was a hangman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but there's a an article in the Irish Times this week that suggests that this was all like flagrantly abused. This uh, this scenario. 
So it came out a few weeks after the death that Paula Yates gave an, uh, an interview after this terrible child Paula custody. Yates was her, his wife at yeah, the time. Yeah, was the wife, uh, married to Bob Geldof at the time. Uh, they had three kids, Peaches, Trixie Bell, and... <sighs> who the fuck knows? Oh, uh, Heavenly Harani, Tiger Lily, the three of them. And uh, thank you. Look, yeah. Um, all from all from memory. <laughs> and um, yeah, all. Uh, so he was uh, fighting for the kids and so on. But uh, she came out with an interview a couple of weeks after it, supposedly. And she was the one to give that narrative of his death. That it was auto asphyxiation due to uh, an erotic an erotic ordeal. Um that was immediately backed up by this psychologist uh, who also was like, yeah, this is totally, uh, totally uh, normal. <laughs> That's definitely something to- Mick would to- do. Totally normal. Uh, and yeah, and then this whole conspiracy theory started around it. But people in recent times, in this uh, Irish uh, Times article, like tried to really rebut it because they're saying that after all these interviews with all of his previous uh, previous partners and so on, they never found him to be that guy who was tying himself to a door and jerking off. <clears throat> so, like, but do you really speak to your mates about that? Like, hands up, I've never tied myself to a door and jerked off. But I feel like if I did, I wouldn't be like, "Hey, you know, guess what I was doing earlier." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is from my new gold chain. Stop asking questions. Um, no, actually, it, it it also came up in the article that 20 minutes before the death of Michael Hutchins, he had called uh, an old guard friend to say how shit his life was and how he couldn't handle it anymore. And kind of what I wanted to ask was, like, how do you go from a phone call where, where it's like, just like the end of your feeling like the end of the world for you and like so downtrodden depressed that everyone gets depressed how do you go from being so depressed to 20 minutes later tying a noose and jerking off on a door because there's nothing better than a <laughs> <laughs> no bet no better pick me up there's no better than a good old auto asphyxiation who mark. needs valium <clears throat> Because uh, we lost, what was it, Kill Bill to, to that as well. Uh, Who? The, the lad that played Kill Bill in the Tarantino movies. Oh, no movies. way! Yeah, that was, that was how he went out. I didn't know that. Um, but, I mean, so what, what are they saying? Are they saying, well, it was just straight up suicide? And if it was, yeah, they're saying why straight... would they add the wanking part? <laughs> exactly. That? Well, that, that's where it goes back to it, that Polly Yates added that narrative to it. So, like, was it just suicide? But who the fuck hangs himself from a door? Surely you're going to get, like, the highest point and just go for it. You're not going to go for something that is, like, four feet off the ground. And Did Polly Yates find him? No. So whoever, f- there's, I mean, whoever found him, there's got to be I, some evidence of it not I, just I said, being... I a- said no way too quickly there, but the fact of the matter was that they were had, like, a really lengthy custody battle over the kids and they weren't in the same country and yeah I can't imagine that Polly Yates found them I find out well it, have you ever found them probably no like knows what happened yeah like because you don't accidentally hang yourself before you get started I would imagine uh, I, I would imagine too unless he's like okay I'm gonna kill myself oh actually this is extremely sexy and uh, <laughs> like suddenly starts and does rig and mortis hit immediately or is it <laughs> but is it's it... like you're gonna be able to tell surely like if when you find this is this has gone a very dark turn <laughs> <laughs> i think it's very so clear. much for positive news i think it's very, <laughs> it's kind of clear how much alcohol we've had already this evening um i would imagine I just feel like there, there's nothing to be gained other than maybe it'll help in a custody battle. Like, oh, that 
he was into this stuff. Like, that might be... I don't know how that fucking helps in... Oh, yeah, for her, yeah. Yeah, for her. Yeah. Yeah, not for her. But him. he's already he's, dead, he's so surely you don't have to fight too many people to get the custody at that point. That's also so what, very true. So, so I don't so see any gain benefit from it. it. Like, yeah. other than maybe she fucking, like, just... Despised him. And then, and was yeah. like, I'm going to add an element of humiliation to this. And, like... Because nobody, like... His parents, you don't want to hear that. And it's like, ah, oh, yeah. Old Mick. You know. I remember Michael. Having a... Jerking off in the bathroom. Right. Before... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for Let's bringing this up. The topic. Change it quickly. Uh, Tell me, tubbies. So, I don't, I don't know if it was in Ireland. Oh, oh that's my phone. Uh, if I say the little chef, do you know what I'm talking about? Not a clue. Not the re- the restaurant. No, no. Okay. So many a time when we're like, let's go back to a more wholesome time back in the UK, and we'd be heading up and down to see Andy's and uncles, and heading up and down Scotland in the UK. Uh, the the little chef was a little roadside restaurant. Uh, you just it was every hundred miles there'd be one you'd stop. Get some shady food. Like. I'm from I'm from Ireland. Yeah, no, that's why I said like uh, no, I don't know if you have them over there. No, like it, no, we don't. Like, yeah, you can get. We don't. Like, we, don't we don't have UK stuff over. Yeah, us. but there's things like <laughs> McDonald's, which are surprisingly in other countries. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just taking the piss. <laughs> Very poorly, might I? Yeah. <laughs> For uh, me, I'm happy. Yeah, I just don't know. Like, it might have been over there. Uh, but so, little chef went like. Uh, Lots of good nostalgia memory, but it just like it just never updated. So it just became this like old kind of fucking waffle house breakfasty like uh, shitty food. Uh, and they eventually went out of business. Uh, I don't know how long ago, five ten years. But the story is now these little shops or, or these little restaurants, uh, so they're all up the A one in in the UK, um, are becoming sex shops. So, no way. And they're still called Little Chef? Because <laughs> <laughs> that is a great name for a sex shop. Sh- <laughs> uh, Cooking wa- up a storm in the bedroom. I've not written that. It was one particular brand, but I've not written down. It didn't, And it didn't sound particularly like sex shoppy. So they've like branded it. Something, might Perfectly. Well be, but, yeah. So it's essentially because nobody wants to go into their... Avocados are us or something like that. Like, oh, hey, Mary, how's it going? Like, and while you're <laughs> buying your fucking dildos, your your dildos and your auto asphyxiation belts, um, they have belts for that. I, <laughs> 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 if you want to be fancy, <laughs> uh, yeah. So apparently, like, lots of people like as they're heading up and down. I, I get, I'm guessing salesmen probably like traveling salesmen. It's always traveling, traveling salesmen, salesmen though. Eh? They'll be. They'll be like. I mean, if you if, if you watch any true crime on Netflix, there's probably like two thirds of them are traveling salesmen, mm-hmm. and they weren't messing around because they had they had stuff up to like fifteen thousand quid, like a, like a sex doll for fifteen thousand fifteen thousand pounds. Yeah. So I didn't think I don't think it was one of the AI ones quite yet, but uh, what well, you, you mean like kind of like AI, like the the R two D two robot that just says. No, I can't do that. And then plays a little tune. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, well, if when you're you going to report the crime, <laughs> you may as well stick my dick in you. <laughs> I, I would like to turn you over. Can't do that. <laughs> exactly. So that's my... That's my only, I've only got one sex-related story this week. I don't have anything on Pornhub. Uh, that's good. Yeah. That's probably good for you. I mean, like, this Breaking is. Breaking away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is a good graph for you. I mean, uh, <laughs> you're definitely getting away from that shit. Uh, oh, I'm... wait, I do have. <laughs> oh! Snap. Snap. It's not. Oh, I needed to. I actually needed to download the photo to sh- uh, show you, but there's uh, a sculpture in uh, Paris that was unveiled uh, last week by Jeff Koons. And the big issue that everybody's looking at it and just calling it, it looks like... A giant penis? A giant vagina, actually. 
Uh, oh, or multiple vaginas. Oh, it's a, it's the flowers. It looks like ch- they're supposed to be tulips. Yes, exactly. It's meant to be oh, tulips no or daffodils shit. or something. It was like a hand, and everybody's saying it looks like he's just holding a lot of flashlights or something like that. Yeah, they, I mean, really drag them out of the gutter. They kind of look like, they, they kind of look like tulips. Serious. I mean, I think Jeff done a good job there. I there mean, you go, Jeff. From Celts in the Caribbean to you. You done a good yeah, job. Chin up, mate. Chin, chin up. up. It's it's all right. It doesn't look like a, a bunch of vaginas. Exactly. Modern art is kind of shit, and this is definitely better than that. Yeah. That is as high as uh, my regard goes for it. Uh, one of the Scottish inventions I was a little bit surprised at. This was a... Uh, oh, no. It was a... a An Irish J- invention. Are you going to say, oh, no, it was Irish invention? James invention? Young Simpson. Oh? Talking okay. about vaginas. Uh, James Young Simpson, he uh, was the first person to come up with using uh, uh, anesthesia (laughs) Anesthesia during childbirth. No way. I would have thought that would have been a female invention. Like, it seems like if I was in that amount of pain, I'd be like... I'm going to try and figure this shit out. (laughs) So as I don't have to do it again. Or or James Young Simpson. Before my next ten children. Or maybe James Young Simpson's wife has just had a lot of kids and he's had to like hear about it. Or maybe so he is like, just the oh, perfect just husband and is very receptive. Yeah, that's that's a better. That'll get less complaints. <laughs> <laughs> he was <laughs> just like, "What was that, sweetheart? That was really <sighs> terrible." Just like, okay, let's fix it. Yeah, let's create an anesthetic. So mm-hmm. I do have, I do have a, a female inventor as well that makes it onto the list. Uh, Super sexy name. Go uh, for it. I'm not sure I can. Will <laughs> <laughs> Wilhelmina. Wilhelmina Fleming. Wow. Yeah. Wilhelmina. Sorry. That. Uh, so she, I get, I'm not sure if this is an invention. Uh, the Horsehead Nebula. I'm not really sure you can claim you invented the the Horsehead Nebula, but apparently, uh, what, Wilhelmina what Fleming. What is that? It's uh, it's like it's a solar system, so it's like the Milky Way. Oh, you can't. Well, it's not like so. It's a nebula. Yeah, okay. but uh, Wilhelmina Fleming from from Scotland is uh, famous for find, like IDing and and discovering finding it in... hundreds of different stars. So uh, good on you, Wilhelmina. Yeah, uh, some would say you are clutching at stars. Ouch. <laughs> Trying too hard, <laughs> but my dad did send me. Apparently, uh, so we all know Alexander Graham Fleming. He invented penicillin. Yes, I think I had it's Graham there. Did I? Just Alexander no. Fleming. Alexander uh, Fleming. So um, Alexander Fleming invented penicillin. But so linking to our twenty-three and Me, which is coming up soon. Ooh, maybe oh. in like ten minutes or so. <laughs> Get this some... is like a paternity test. I know, we're getting I, like... I feel like this is like a Jeremy Kell segment. Fancy. But my... It's excellent. Great... Is it Great Grand or Great Great Grand Thompson from Coldingham? Her sister, Bella, uh, was the housekeeper for Alexander Graham Fleming. Okay? No way. And in his early 20s, he got super sick and she nursed him back to health. So she had nothing to do with the invention... But she saved Alexander Fleming's life. So, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, down the street. You're welcome, world. You're fucking right. I mean, I didn't do anything particular, but... Uh, That's pretty cool, though. It's, that, a, it's like a nice little... Like, uh, yeah, it's a na- nice little segment, but I mean... For a while, we thought we were also the ancestors of uh, Robbie Burns. So, the poet laureate, yeah. old Lang Syne, old to a haggis, all that kind of stuff. But that turned out not to be... Yeah, his... Uh, his dad was a... He wasn't particularly proud of his father. He was a bit of a... Uh, I think he was a drunk and a womanizer and all that kind of stuff. And his dad had a, 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 the same last name as we do. Uh, and Robbie Burns changed his name. Um, but that turned out to be false. So that might have been a bit, a bit of fake news. Fake news. Yeah, we did, our, we did our ancestry lineage back to the 1400s. So... It didn't, I'm excited. 40 minutes can't come soon enough. I know. We've got six minutes, 20 seconds to go. Hold on in there. <sighs> I, can't, I can't wait. All right. Should we uh, do a little news story between go for then it. and there? Do you want me to go for oh, it? Me. Um, I've got some Chick-fil-A news. Oh, okay. Uh, so Chick-fil-A. Uh, 
doesn't have a great rep. It's a, it's a US fast food chain, one of the, the larger ones. It has 20, uh, 2,400 outlets in the USA. But it is partic- it's getting a bad rep for being uh, opposing gay marriage. In 2012, they came out saying they're, they're against gay marriage. And they've just been, they're essentially hostile to LGBT rights. And they make donations to, to anti LGBT organizations. Chick fil A. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's no essentially way. like Christian based organizations that are, uh, and then oh, it gets out like God. that. Why do you ruin my, like, enjoyment of the food well that's the thing it's it's come over to the uk so they've opened on the 10th of october it's currently the 19th of october the first uh uk chick-fil-a opened up and on the 18th of october yesterday it was closed down so <laughs> it lasted a, it well it's not not technically closed down but it, it lasted eight days but for the, what day for what for what reason for for those reasons for it being like oh. a, a non-inclusive company so they uh they uh, retracted the rental agreement so the person that had rented to them uh, found out about it and then they were on like a six month uh initial contract and it was like okay your contract's not being renewed which i think is kind of awesome yeah uh, damn straight like that's <clears throat> that's really amazing i mean especially in this capitalist uh, uh society that we all live in uh, that someone is like yeah fuck it no sorry yeah one and done in the uk and they're up to where, where was it was it london manchester i wrote it down i'm sure i th- <sighs> I think it was like Coventry, or I might have another story out of Coventry. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna, let's let's say it was Coventry. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I was going to talk about Fortnite. Um, not the two week period, but the game. Uh, did you see the the asteroid hit Fortnite? The black hole. The black mm-hmm. hole. I don't play. Fortnite, but it did make it like it did make big news. Yeah, for sure. damn straight, it made, made big news. Um, it was the e- end of the game after ten years. Um, it was they said that it would always the, that time would be a factor in it, and it would like be limited. And uh, yeah, after it's, ten years, it came to a close. Um, and, and now, uh, all that's in the screen for Fortnite is a giant black hole. Yeah, no, but it opened back up again, mate. No way. Yeah, it was like two days. No fucking way. Two or way. three days. Yeah, they were just changing the map. Oh, what a load of bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> they make millions, like, a day. So yeah, but <laughs> was... Wh- okay, <laughs> I, got, I, I, I genuinely got to keep going with uh, my notes here. Was Elon Musk behind it? I... <laughs> I've not heard this. What's, how was Elon Musk behind the black hole in Fortnite? Okay, so um, supposedly he was in talks to buy it, and then his Twitter feed said, um, "What was it? I've I've got to do something for saving these kids from being eternal virgins." So, <laughs> so you're saying Elon Musk bought Fortnite and then closed blew it, it down. Up. No, I'm almost. I might be. I'm almost certain it was just a three-day thing while they were refreshing the servers and building a new map. Oh, this is total. Letdown no, yeah, because it was chapter eleven just started. For, like, well, I can imagine how chapter eleven started. It was just after chapter ten. Yes, exactly. So <laughs> it was ten years, and then boom. Oh. No, it's it's not ten years old. There's no way it's ten seasons old. Ten seasons. Yeah, yeah and each season's like eight weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so out of love with this. Oh, mate. Jeez. Well, I didn't get fucking drowned because uh, my little nephew told me to jump in the water. <laughs> Isn't that Ooh. the case? Isn't that the case, Alan? That is a sick burn. Oh! Sick burn. Sick burn. <laughs> I was also going to do a segue because I thought this was a fucking great one. Uh, about the gambling that happens from the people who are playing uh, games like this. Um, we talked about this. I'm sure this was one one of our earlier episodes. No, totally not. Uh, maybe yes, but uh, <laughs> no. There's no. There's actually uh, facts to prove it. <laughs> okay, what's the What's the game that has the most gambling in it right now? <sighs> Don't ask famous. me stupid stuff like that. It just built a casino. I have a segue. Oh, really? Okay. God, it's one of the world's most famous games. You've got Fortnite. 
PUBG, um, name some famous games. World of Warcraft? Nope. Duke Nukem? No. no, no, no. <laughs> I miss Duke Nukem. That was a good one. Uh, uh, what Grand, is it? Grand Theft Auto. Oh, no way. Grand Theft well, you don't know what I'm going to say yet. No. What, what are but, you all no weighing at? No, but like Grand Theft Auto have set up uh, an online casino. Yeah, there's a casino in Grand Theft It's It's all about murdering prostitutes. Of course, they're going to have a casino in there ah, somewhere. Okay, but... Y- okay. That can't be... Like, if you that ah. will blew you away. <laughs> just just boil it down, though. Like, did, did are you able to gamble actual money in this casino? Uh, but mm. you can't win anything. Can so you, you like you, you put ten bucks in and get a thousand dollars worth of fake money and then you go to the casino but you can't let, like if you win a million. So what the you fuck's point putting out. in ten bucks? I think it's just for fun. What load of shit! Yeah. Uh, well, actually, this probably plays into everything with this because um, there's like fifty five thousand. There's like uh, this new thing with the NHS. They've set it up for uh, kids with gambling addictions. <laughs> Between the ages of 11 and 16 years old. 55,000 kids. And this has got to be a new thing, I'd imagine. Because it must yeah. be really hard to get addicted to gambling, like, pre-internet. Like, yeah. I mean, maybe 100%. you're, like, gambling your togs or something. Yeah, exactly. That, what togs. was those little plastic round things? That hogs. You Pogs? I thought you were talking about your pants. <laughs> <laughs> gambling your pants. <laughs> It's a risky gamble. I'll put a pair of... Uh... Yeah, but there's always been, like, whether it's online, there's always been that kind of stuff in the schoolyard. You're always like, oh, I, I'll bet you, I'll bet you my Yeah, pog. but it's, it's been exaggerated. Or your silvers, the... your silver sticky, uh, like, whether it's football stars or whatever. Yeah, but it's, it's been like, exacerbated oh. by the, the internet, according to a, a few studies. Yeah. So, um... There's this one guy in in England who's saying that his 20 year old son um, had got into like serious gambling addictions, uh, online betting, and his like his gambling became such an an issue that the they started to have to like bail him out. Uh, he it wasn't like gambling on Fortnite or anything like that. He wasn't like it wasn't like that the games had anything to do with the gambling in that respect, but they put it down to the amount of hours that he was spending per day online that whenever he became a young adult, that he was then starting to like just stay online and bet because he was spending like six to eight hours a day online. Um, but also things like, uh, like what was he gambling on? Though, he, like it was a betting website. So he's betting, playing poker betting websites. Or, uh, it was like Betfair, gotcha. Paddy Power, okay. so on and so forth. <clears throat> but um, uh, the father then set up a, a site called uh, Gamfam. He terrible quit, name. He, <laughs> terrible name. <laughs> he, he he quit his job as. Um, as a teacher and set up a, an organization called GAMFAM, which was for uh, families that have children or young adults in the family that are addicted to gambling okay. uh, online. Um, and they start to trace it back and there's like, they started to do some studies now on it and things like loot boxes on some of the, I think it's Fortnite, that you, you you kind of have to pay like uh, some of the uh, some of the platforms are kind of like it's all free to play but whenever you get in there you have to actually pay to get to a certain amount of this I'm or a victim that or the of other. this yeah so I, I play PUBG yeah and then there's times maybe like where I'm playing or I've had a couple of beers and I'm like oh there's a loot box here with like a lion's head on it. How cool would it be if I'm running around shooting people with a lion's head on, yeah. and then boom, two ninety nine. I've got a lion's head, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm thirty eight years old. Why yeah, did, ex- fantastic. Why do I need a lion's? Head? Con- consider that with an eleven year old or a sixteen year old. Yeah, whatever. Uh, they don't have that money. They don't have a credit card, so they're using a parental credit card. So they're using money that is not theirs that they didn't earn, and this is kind of what the whole overall problem is, according to a few of these people, is that 
people are starting now to feel that money is not really legitimate. So they're they're using their parents' money to pay for all of this stuff. So it's whenever when, value. they're seeing it as these credits, exactly, they're, they're, they're seeing money <clears throat> as credits, and then their it, money itself is losing value. Uh, so whenever they actually gamble it, yeah, you're not uh, um, the 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 consequences from it are not as severe as what you think. Despite it being, if it's Betfair, Paddy Power, whatever, you have to pay the fucking cash after it. And, um, yeah, they're making the links pretty quickly. Uh, I mean, uh, like, there was a high-powered uh, dude from uh, uh, Paddy Power who actually stepped down over this uh, because he was making the links between online gaming and, like, online betting. And he, he, couldn't, uh, he couldn't live with it anymore. I mean, it, it, it seems like such a, a ridiculous uh, way to, to think, like, that one thing can jump to another. No, but they, they've got to make their money somehow because they're they're spending millions on producing these. Yeah, of course. Back to my GTA point, it, uh, Davy Jones. He was Scott. He was he, the original G, well GTA Rockstar Games is based out of Edinburgh. That okay. Was, but, so that was another Scottish invention. The Grand Theft Auto was Scottish. Like you. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so these yeah these things are going out for free. Like the one I play is just on my iPad. Grand Theft Auto was never free, free though. It was like a, no, that's it was like a, a fifty dollar, fifty game. sixty pound game. Like, but that's that's what it, that seems to be how the industry is advancing. Now you download it for free, <clears throat> and they want subscriptions. So yeah. you, whether you it's have to make IP your money back or, somewhere, yeah, is, so is, is what you're saying. Just trying so to get more and more money out of each user because like they want the games to last rather than like. You play it for a, a few days and complete it, and like boom. But it also seems a little bit game. immature to think that that's how they're doing it. Oh, we can't sell it now, so we're going to have to do subscriptions. No, they're s seeing it as this is an online market where you don't have to buy it now, but you can do a subscription. Then you can buy a, for example, a loot box. You know, like you can buy the add-ons and this and this and this and this and this. And what? Then before you know it, it's like twice the price of the actual fucking game itself whenever you bought it in uh, GameStop. Yeah, I mean, these things are are making more than Hollywood movies just now. A lot of the, the big releases. Yeah. All right, it is 47 minutes. We've kept you waiting. I've just logged into the 23andMe app. I'm excited. What do you want to know? I like... Uh, to be honest, I actually have no idea what they're going to tell you. So, like, does it tell you that you're from Scotland? Does it tell you that you're a male? That's uh, what I'm looking for, but there's a lot of, like, ran So, I'm, I'm currently exploring my recommended reports. It says my, my finger length ratio. So, that that's also important. For all, for all you ladies out there. My asparagus odor detecting. If that, uh, what? Oh, I have a fear of heights is one of my traits. Okay. And a cilantro aversion uh, that is coriander for. And do you? Uh, I'm. I don't mind. I'm kind of lazy when it comes to food. I'll eat anything. But uh, you do have a fear of heights. I do have a fear of heights. Yeah, son of a bitch. Okay. Uh, oh man, I'm gonna pause this and find the right thing. Okay, <laughs> I find it. Uh, so I'm 85% British and Irish with three other populations. So I knew that beforehand. Well, <laughs> like, because I'd seen the results, but I haven't pushed the button to see what my other, uh, 15 percent are. Okay. Uh, Nordic. So Northwestern European, I'm 98.7 European, 99.9%. Uh, <sighs> awesome. This is, oh, this is kind of, uh, French and German, 5.2 Scandinavian, so that's my that's my Viking, only three percent Viking. I could I could feel that from you. You're Southern European, point two percent. So somebody had a little trip to broadly Central Asian, Northern Indian and Pakistan, point one percent. So Yeah. I've had I've had somebody go on a gap year and do the dirty somewhere. <laughs> maybe like ten generations ago. <laughs> you also want to open up that corner shop here. There we go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, mainly Glasgow. 
Oh, Kaine Donegal. There we go. No way. Yeah, fuck yeah. Could it be cousins. That's the best bet to you. Yeah. That's that full beard. Oh. What else you got? Uh, I think like unless I delve into this, I don't really know how that works. It's got a lot. There's a lot of information. So, uh, oh yeah, no, I'd, I'd get lost. So, oh, I'm actually mainly from the Highlands. No way. There you go. And, a Scotsman uh, was from Scotland. There we go. Oh, and here's something called the Celtic Fringe. That's important for us. Uh, yeah. Fuck it, I'm pretty Celtic. <laughs> Viking invasions. I was probably involved with a little bit of Viking invasion. A little Three percent. I well, don't. I don't know how much fucking. Uh, it has Viking raids invasions right on my app here. Yeah, uh, of course it did. But you also in the have late seven hundreds, my ancestors were doing lots of raping and pillaging. <sighs> fucking loved it. That's what it says. I'm, I'm <laughs> sure you were the. You're the. <laughs> Your ancestor was the love child. Well, I bet you are glad you waited 47 um, minutes to, to find out all that. That was as much of a disappointment as Matrix uh, Revolutions, I'm sorry. <laughs> really. You know what wasn't a disappointment? Wow. As for this lad who took Johnson & Johnson, so one of the big, uh, the big medical companies, uh, Big Pharma, uh, took him to court. Oh, he was using a drug called Respit... Respetrol or something. Didn't really look into what it did. But it gave him some uh, man boobies. Gave him some breast growth. And he won $8 billion over For this man tits. Case. For man tits. Jesus. What How much are mine worth? I was going to say, what are mine <laughs> worth? I got, I got some A's here, but. So $8 billion over man titties. But apparently it's like, it's one of those. Uh, so they just put a like it's when the jury doesn't really want to make a decision, so they just put a massive amount on the the settlement, and then it has to go like it, oh, so it's going to go through talks now, and then exactly. he's going to end up with like twenty dollars. Yeah, so Johnson and Johnson aren't going to pay eight billion. It's just one of those like you fucked up. Here's what you'll have to pay if you don't make a settlement. Let's get this out of the courts, kind of thing. Okay. So it's that. Yeah, so eight billion for man titties. I was going to talk about. Uh, the Venga Boys being Are they back in town. The 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 Venga Boss is coming, okay. and everybody's jumping. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. New York and San Francisco, really? Brilliant. That's going to be in my head. All <laughs> Thank you very much. No, um, provided that we will be in Europe together next year in at the start of July. I don't know if it's going to be the start of July, but the Venga Boys five. S Club, the Out Here Brothers are all going to be at a festival in uh, in in Ireland, and this is very exciting. I really for for a festival. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I'm like they're going to be no, at a festival. I meant who's for... it exci- who's it exciting for? <laughs> Me, twelve year old girls. No, and you, twelve <laughs> year old girls nowadays don't have a fucking clue what the Venga Boys are. They don't know the, the quality that uh, S Club 7 The lineup is us. actually phenomenal. This is going to be a Punchestown race course on the 27th uh, of June 2020. If you mention Celts in the Caribbean, you will get a discount 10%. <laughs> yeah. No, you won't. No, you won't. <laughs> no, we're, you just, won't. we're trying to sound a bit more professional. <laughs> no, you won't. But the, the bands are bands DJs it's a it's a throwback to the 90s it's a throwback to Walkman <laughs> uh, fucking tape recorders all that shit it's a uh, I can't wait for this this is gonna I, be I, I'm excited I, I genuinely will book my holiday around this this will make the Foo Fighters look like garbage <laughs> <laughs> well the headliner is Maxi Jazz from Faithless okay uh, no Faithless is a great class. yeah so that'll be pretty fun I've but seen pop- them before Paul Oakenfield. Uh, okay. let, let me see here. I'm 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 not saying this is in in line of what is on the poster, but actually what I would know or see. The Vanga Boys, Two Unlimited, Ian Vandal, Barthez, 
Uh, we have S Club. Oh man, we have the O Tier Brothers. DJ Quicksilver. Oh Jesus Wait, Christ! What did the the O Tier Brothers do again? That's screaming. Boom boom boom! I want to hear you say whale. Whale. <laughs> exactly. Who doesn't want to hear that in a live venue? That is gonna be only amazing. insane people would not want to go to see this. Exactly. Um, I'm looking through the rest of it, and it's kind of oh, Koshin, uh, bewitched. Fuck yeah, they were class. You know well, it. They were cute. They were cute. They're all dressed in denim. Yeah. Um. So I was just proposing maybe if we are in the same space at that same time instead of going to see the food fighters lame let's we put could, that we solidly could, in the maybe pile we yeah. could we could go see be watching the art here brothers and we've got a year we'll, we'll maybe be technologically advanced that we could do a live stream with bewitched in the background guess how much the tickets are uh 15 quid <laughs> they're forty. They're actually forty-five. Oh, that's actually uh, it's, it's pretty still, good. Still quite a, very good value <laughs> yeah, for money. Pretty good value for money. <laughs> one day festival or yeah, one day festival. Yeah, yeah. nice. Uh, what else are we talking about, mate? You got any? I've got a couple of things we can squeeze in. We're I got a conspiracy to... theory one here, but ah, uh, it goes off and it's still not resolved. So. Maybe we ho- we've got about five minutes left. You want to hold that one for next week? If we're, if is that gonna is it a long conversation or is it just me gonna go? This is, this is ridiculous. Stop talking about I it. I think you're probably gonna say this is ridiculous. I stop talking about it. What do you got? Uh, I've got a ninja student gets an A. Let me talk about the conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> What what oh the ninja sh- oh this is the blank ink or the yeah she wrote an essay in invisible ink and got an A for it and uh, just really a headline just kind of awesome nice one bro the fact that there's ninja student I don't think she's studying to be a ninja I think it's ninja history but still like very fucking cool uh, another random headline <laughs> I've got is uh, this one's from Aussie Man Reviews uh, Chinese family raises dog for two years before realizing it's an, actually in a bear. So, bullshit yeah that sounds kind of unbelievable i mean you get i think they thought it was one of those ugh, i don't know i just it's just just sounds like nonsense but in ter- I, I know the internet's very wildly restricted so you're not on oh yeah the, you're totally not restricted. you're not up there googling bears every day so maybe you find a fucking and what, fluffy dog and, and what if you're a gay guy like googling bears what is what does that do uh, Google Images will hook you up. Right? <laughs> be all right. I was going to do a segue on your uh, ninja story. Ooh. It was a, an apology after an Indian students wear cardboard boxes for exams. If you haven't seen this. <laughs> I saw that about just before we started the podcast. I saved it for next week. Oh, no shit. That's this is the one not... I was talking about. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I love it. They were wearing cardboard boxes. Uh, um with just like a visor cut out in the front uh, so as they couldn't look left or right and copy from the person beside them. Uh, the university has come out and said they're very sorry for making the students wear this. The photo's amazing. It's great. The photo's hilarious, actually. It's just so ridiculous. I'll make sure that gets up onto our Facebook uh, yeah, account. It's, yeah, it's just absurd. Yeah, uh, A lot of people stopped wearing them after 15 minutes. Um... After one hour, the university said that they didn't have to wear them. How Shit. long was the exam? I don't know. Two hours. Uh, oh. who, who fucking knows? Who cares? Yeah, who, who gives they a They had to shit? wear boxes on their head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, had to, you had to wear like a box that carried like a lot of Cheetos or something. Uh, did you see well, how much Piers Morgan did you watch this week? Uh, the same as last week. Is that N- none? Absolute zero. Yeah, that's yeah. that's about as much as Piers Morgan I can handle as well. Uh, but there was a bloke on uh, morning TV or whatever the fuck Piers Morgan's on. Uh, he was identifying as being a broccoli. So he was uh, Piers Morgan was intervi- uh, interviewing this guy dressed I, as a bo- do you broccoli. You know, I think I should watch P- more Piers Morgan because I would have loved that interview. Yeah, the guy sounds pretty class. So, it, like, I don't think it was a play on. Uh, it was, he was arrested. He became famous, famous, ish, 
uh, because he was arrested at the Animal Rebellion protest. Uh, and while he was being r- arrested, somebody was filling on and he was shouting, give peas a chance. So, but <laughs> that was pretty classic. And what's the affiliation between peas and broccoli? That you would have to ask him. I don't know, I don't know if that I was don't... one of the hard hitting questions that Pierre. Pierce I'll be Morgan honest, I don't know how to. much I believe this guy. Yeah, he was just. Uh, uh, I think he's in it for himself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Right. Uh, let's uh, let's finish up. So we've done some. Oh man, I've still got. I've, I've hardly done any Scottish inventions. I, but we they were good. They were good. You 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 had like a kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope. Chicken tikka masala. That's one chicken of the, tikka masala yeah, that's one or of just more. tikka masala. I don't think that we invented chickens. That's no, I just mean like, maybe, was it specifically chicken tikka masala? Like, did you take a pork tikka masala and go, as a Scotsman, I'm going to put <laughs> chicken in here and call it chicken tikka masala? I have written down chicken tikka masala. Oh, so, you guys. Uh, Halloween, that's uh, coming up. Bullshit. Yeah. That's an Irish festival. It's pagans. Sorry. Yeah, pagan. Scottish. Originally, the Hill of Tara was the first ever... Uh, known instance of it. Do you want me to read out the bit on Halloween that I have? Because I I'll, will. I'll read you. I'll, I read, you, I'll read, read you out the Irish thing. piece of it too. Right, right. Like let's get on this right now. All right, let's do it. Uh, I do have the thing of uh, <sighs> Halloween Samana, pronounced Suin, translating to summer's end, was a traditional pagan festival held in Scotland for thousands of years. Uh, way before the Irish, that's what it says here. <laughs> <laughs> Go suck a dick. <laughs> to mark the end of the harvest. The orange glow associated with Halloween represents the autumn colours. During uh, during Sowin. Uh, Sowin. Sowin. Uh, bonfires were You don't were even lit. know how to pronounce it. Ugh, well, that doesn't, that's not really That's not the evidence. issue here. Superstition believed that ghosts of the deceased could mingle with the living during the festival. Blah, blah, blah. Doesn't, like, it's not... There's not a huge amount of evidence that Scottish here, other than it says held in Scotland for thousands of years. This really, it doesn't actually say it was invented here either. You, I don't know. That's a that's a that's a dirty one there. All right, syringes, dolly sheep, fingerprinting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fingerprinting. Yep, fingerprinting. Yeah, because you got so many fucking criminals. I, when I read it, I, I read finger you get- finger painting, <laughs> like finger banging. Good on your Scots. <laughs> The old finger banging. And <laughs> uh, tonic of the old gin and tonic uh, was originally created by Doctor George Cleghorn uh, to cure malaria because it was like yeah. it was quinning, quining, fuck, I can't. Quinning, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it tasted like balls. So he added a lot of like yeah, sugar it, was, and stuff it, to it. it was a gentrified drink because yeah. uh, so many of your Scots people were colonizing along with the English in uh, Africa. Yep, yeah, in there along with the Irish. Yep. No, and, it's, uh, <laughs> I don't think we colonized very, <laughs> very much. <laughs> um, Sir Alexander Grant with the digestive bits to get hypnotherapy, the toaster, refrigerator. Uh, the radar was old Sir Robert Watson Watt. Yeah, loads of shit, mate. Fucking just nailing it, really. Did I say Hammer Dolly at Sheep? Home. Dolly Sheep was class. Actually, that was fantastic. Yeah, you're welcome. You, you rock. Because now we're gonna have what? Have you personally invented anything? Me? I invented uh, pea sushi. Which was like sushi rolled in pizza. You'd get a bit of sushi and then roll pizza around it. Um, that was my. That's oh, my. That sounds so disgusting. That will in time be Can added to the Scottish invention. I'm list. sure it will because you still deep fry sh- everything. So and I now mean, it's I, according according to your cuisine, it's going to be great. Yeah. So pizza. What did I call it? Pea sushi. Pea su- it was. It was a great name. Pea sushi. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I uh, hope you had a fun. I hope you had a couple of beers along with us while we're uh, having a wee chat. And from Alan and Bonaire uh, and Yunnan and the Dominican Republic, we will uh, see you next week. Cheers. Good night. Good night.